Hello Lutes, I'm Lacey Nicholson and welcome to Lutes Center, the sports show where we will cover exciting topics happening in the PLU athletic community. Today's show takes an in-depth look at the recruiting process within the athletic department here at PLU and our half-athlete segment with Christian Bond as he attempts track and field events. A lot of people have heard and know about the large-scale recruiting process that Division I and Division II schools go through, especially for sports of high popularity like football or basketball. Reporter Dylan Foreman takes a look at how small Division III colleges go about the recruiting process. Recruiting student athletes at the Division III level is a different animal in regards to the rest of college sports. There are no athletic scholarships to give and playing at the Division III level does not have the glitz and glamour that Division I or II schools have. But student athletes who don't quite make the cut at upper divisions still get the opportunity to play past high school while also receiving an individualized educational experience. PLU coaches and administrators break down what it means to recruit at this Division III level. Uh, recruiting is the lifeblood of any, of any program. Um, certainly all the other things with, that go into it are, are important as well administratively and all that stuff, you know, how you train teams, weights, uh, recovery. Uh, you know, athletic training, conditioning, all this stuff, but you have to have the talent to be able, it doesn't sometimes matter how good of a coach you are unless you have the correct talent to, to be um, outstanding. So recruiting is at the forefront of our program needs. It's, it's the number one priority. All the things we sell, what we value, what makes us unique and championships and national championships and great players and that type of deal, that, that is still comes down to that. So we're looking for great kids of character, kids who understand and embrace what we ultimately value, our foundational you know, mandates that we live on and humbly try to you know, uh, mentor and carry on and teach and learn and all those things. Uh, it still comes down to some, hey, can this kid play? Compared to bigger schools with nicer amenities and the feel of a large scale collegiate experience, PLU falls short. However, they make up for it with their holistic point of view of what they want the college experience for incoming first years to be like. The small liberal arts school allows for these students to pursue extracurricular activities, focus on their vocation academics, as well as play a collegiate sport. With trying to find those students that are interested in having high academic opportunities, high athletic competitive opportunities, but well-rounded students. They're interested in wanting to not be just a pigeonholed uh, basketball player or a soccer athlete, but they really are interested in global education or their academic program or getting involved in the residential life or other parts. So they're really kind of that holistic uh, person that is looking for that type of experience. I try to tell students, uh, student athletes, is that if you go into a program as an 18 year old freshman and you took PLU and you took Stanford, or let's just take USC who won the Division I national championship, certainly they're going to enter in at different entry points, level of play, level of play. Absolutely there's a there's a there's a there's a difference. And then so they're 18 and 18. But when they come out at 21, all right, then they're looking for what their next step is in their in their life, which is usually a job, a career, a grad school. And so they essentially come out at 21 at the same point. So they enter here, but they exit here. And then I ask them, well now what do you want your experience to be in between these four years? Because Although it's, it's great to say you're on a scholarship, you're at Division II, you're at NEIA, um, you know, if, if you hate it, then is that going to be a great experience for you? PLU recruits a special breed of student athlete. Not only must they be a talented athlete in their sport, but they also must have a high academic standing so that they can receive merit scholarships that would make it affordable to go to school at PLU. What people don't realize is that PLU awards an average of more than three $30,000 in federal financial aid, making the cost about half of the sticker price of tuition. This is a point PLU Athletics tries to sell when recruiting high academic student athletes. When you've got the kid that's a great GPA, nice test score, SAT, ACT, and it was an all-conference deal, it's got size, it's got weight, and it's got hops and all the things from the football attributes, everyone on the West Coast is recruiting that guy. Sometimes the individual that ends up coming to PLU uh, their financial package may be better than if they would have gone to a Division II school. If they're high academic, okay? Right. If they're not, then that's where the struggle is, right? The Loot Center, this is Dylan Foreman. PLU continues to improve on their recruiting strategies as the athletic department is developing a way to get recruits over to PLU for official visits that are fully funded. 
This week, our very own half-athlete, Christian Bond, visited the track to face off against sprinter Garrett Hittner and hammer thrower Lucas Hatton. Let's see how he handled himself against these standout athletes. Hi, I'm Christian Bond, creator and producer of Mass Radio Sports Talk, the most listened to sports talk radio show in POU history. In high school, I played football, basketball, and baseball. Now, I work for POU Athletics. I've written stories for football, basketball, baseball, tennis, golf, and more. I thought it'd be a good idea to meet up with different athletes on campus and try and do what they do. This is Half Athlete Tries. What's up, everybody? POU track and field athletes are preparing for postseason. I thought it'd be a good idea to meet up with a couple of them and try and do what they do. Let's do it. All right, I'm here with Garrett Hittner. Garrett, how are you doing today, man? Doing well, how are you? Doing great, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. So what events do you participate in? in? Uh, for track, I do the sprinting events, so the 100, 200, 400, and 4x1 and 4x4 relays. Cool, do you have a favorite event? Uh, 200, definitely. 200? Why the 200? Uh, I'm taller than most sprinters, so um, usually I take a little bit longer to get up to speed, but then once I'm at top speed, I can keep it for longer than most people. So what is the toughest part of a sprint race? Well, in general, usually the hardest part is uh, driving the whole way through, because uh, usually the philosophy of like 100 meters, you accelerate for about 50 meters, and then maintaining it through the finish line. Uh, the idea is to slow down the least towards the finish. Cool. So I'm not very fast. That's kind of why this is called half athlete tries. I'm not, not quite as fast as you are, but I guess I'm not going to call it a race. But can I uh, can I run against you right now? Sure. Alright, so Sprinting really, really wasn't for me. Maybe we'll try something different. I'm here with Lucas Hatton. Uh, Lucas, how are you doing today, man? Doing good. All right. What events do you participate in? Uh, doing me? I throw shot put, discus, and hammer. Shot put, discus, and hammer. Do you have a favorite of the three? Uh, if I had to pick a favorite, it would be shot put because there's nothing. Uh, it's probably the most intense event. I like that part of it. So. Yeah, cool. Um, I hear that you had a pretty big Northwest Conference tournament. Can you tell me what, what happened? Um, it wasn't necessarily my farthest throws of the season but I ended up winning uh, shot put and hammer on throw six. Um, so I think it was my best uh, competition, I guess. I competed well, I did what I needed to do on my last opportunity and got it done. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, how did it feel to walk away with uh, two titles? I've been behind some really great throwers, so it was cool to finally be on top looking down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sweet. Um, I've seen shot put before, I've seen discus before, but I'm not too familiar with the hammer throw. You mind if you uh, show me how? Yeah. Cool, let's do it. So, hammer stays in front of you. It never moves from here. Okay. It makes no more winding, okay? Left foot heel, right foot toe. Okay? I gotta get the long legs around. Yep. <laughs> now step really tight. Right foot, left foot heel, right foot toe. Oh. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here. We're all the way around. Yeah. <laughs> Knees gotta stay tight, okay? Step out. Okay, you're down with two turns. Again, left foot heel, right foot toe, okay. step, and this one, your feet are planted, turn, and the hammer goes down, and then up and release. <laughs> okay, yeah. we'll see how this works. <laughs> Dude, this is hard. <laughs> I felt like it's going straight back instead of around. 
hammer throw might be the hardest thing you can do at a track and field event. Might be. For Lucas Hatton, I'm Christian Bond. That was Half Athlete Tries. <laughs> Under first year head coach Adam Fry, the Lutes placed third in the Northwest Conference Championships with great showings throughout both the men's and the women's teams. That's all we have for our final episode of Lute Center this year. Thanks for watching and have a great summer. Go Lutes! <laughs>